Welcome to the MSU Deer Labs online seminar series, brought to you by Mississippi State University Extension Service and the Forest and Wildlife Research Center. My name is Steve Damaris, and I'm the Taylor Chair in Applied Big Game Research and Instruction at Mississippi State University. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about plantation pine management decisions and how they affect deer habitat quality. I'm going to focus on Mississippi State University Deer Labs research on this topic. I'm going to cover the importance of forested lands in the southern United States in particular and then the role of white-tailed deer on these forested lands. I'm going to compare landowner objectives between industrial private landowners and non-industrial private landowners and some of the differences in approach that they may take. And then again, I'm going to review our research on the effects of management decisions each of these landowners make on deer habitat quality. Forested lands are really, really important in the United States. Across the U.S., there are 766 million acres of forested lands. The majority of this is privately owned. 58% is owned by private landowners. 19% of it is owned by industrial landowners. These are uh, corporations that own the land primarily to produce a product. And that primary product is, is wood or wood byproducts. 39% of the forested lands are owned by non-industrial landowners. These are private individuals that they may harvest timber from their properties, but they are not an industrial landowner. Many of these landowners place a lot of importance on timber harvest on their lands. Within the South, there are 210 million acres of forested lands and 29.9 million acres are in actively managed pine plantations. This is, uh, the South is known as the wood basket for the United States and potentially for the world. And that's because we have so many acres of managed pine plantations whose primary objective is to produce wood and wood byproducts. Forested lands that are managed can provide some really important benefits for wildlife. But let's look at those two different sources of private lands. There's the private industrial land. Industrial corporations have a fiduciary responsibility. That means they are required by law to make money for their stockholders. And so they manage the land pretty intensively to produce these economic products. However, that land is managed under what are referred to as sustainable forestry certification guidelines, which also include a set of best management practices. Hunting lease income is very important, but is not the primary consideration. Sustainable forestry initiative is one of those oversight uh, mechanisms that help guide the industry to ensure that they are considering ecosystem benefits and not just maximizing their timber production. Now, those private non-industrial lands, oftentimes they manage their properties based on their individual landowner goals. And those goals might vary dramatically among different landowners, but, and oftentimes they differ from the private industrial lands. A national survey of non-industrial private landowners ask why they own their land. 71% of these private landowners owned it for aesthetic reasons. Aesthetics refers to a, a mental appreciation for the beauty of the land. 54% of these private non-industrial landowners owned the forested lands because it was part of their home or farmland. And a high percentage, 62% of the landowners planned to pass their land on to their heirs. Hunting is the reason for ownership in 39%. So almost 40% of the landowners own the land so that they can recreationally hunt on it. Now also a large percentage of other types of recreation take place. Within these non-industrial private landowners, timber production is the reason why they own the land 
in only 20% of the cases. So one in five private landowners own forested land for timber production. There was another survey here within Mississippi of non-industrial private forest landowners, and it was asking, what are the objectives for ownership? Family estate, passing on to your, your heirs, 55% was a primary objective of the ownership. Investment, 44%. Recreational reasons, particularly hunting, 43%. And income generation, surprisingly, was only an objective of ownership in one out of three cases. So only 30% of the private non-industrial landowners in Mississippi considered income generation as the primary objective for ownership. So now we understand a little bit more about land ownership and particularly land ownership and objectives on forested lands based on whether or not you are a private industrial landowner versus a private non-industrial landowner. Within these forests in the South and much of the United States, deer are the most important wildlife species, particularly in the Southeast. Now, you might not agree with that, but I'm gonna to try to convince you of that. They're important, not just for positive reasons, but also for negative reasons. So importance doesn't necessarily mean just because I like them. They're important because they are a problem in many cases. Deer hunting is really important in Mississippi. It's a huge cultural phenomenon. Families practice it. Uh, some families go out on their hunting leases or their private property to hunt deer on Thanksgiving afternoon after having a, a, a wonderful Thanksgiving lunch. It's part of the family culture in Mississippi. It's also extremely important from an economic standpoint. The total economic value of deer hunting to the state is close to $1 billion. And there are over 18,000 jobs supported directly or indirectly from this recreational deer hunting within the state of Mississippi. So it's, they have a really important positive economic impact. Deer have tremendous impacts, not just on recreation, but on physical impacts. Annually, within the United States, there are deer vehicle collisions. There are over one million of these accidents for a cost of billions of dollars. And there's also a very significant human cost. There are 15,000 human injuries and about 50 human fatalities each year from these collisions. And Looking at these photos, they, they're very traumatic, and you could imagine some significant injuries occurring because of these deer coming through the windshield onto the driver or passenger side. Deer have a tremendous impact on agriculture as well. 53% of farmers report damage to their crops, and one estimate was over $575 million annually. So deer impact vehicles, they impact agricultural crops. Deer also have a tremendous negative impact within the forests that they live in. There's an estimate of commercial timber damage from deer of greater than $1.6 billion within the Midwest and Eastern United States. It's a lot of value to future economic returns from timber harvest. You can see in this picture that there is literally no forest regeneration. So that's a real problem to natural regeneration of forests. Here's the result from a survey of private foresters working on regeneration of timber stands in New York State. 45% of the stands that they attempted to regenerate to create a new stand of future timber products were only marginally successful. 25%, one out of four, were a complete failure. And in most cases, deer were the likely cause of the failure or the only marginal success at regeneration. So deer are a real problem with forest regeneration. 
Okay, now here's a picture that does not represent a forested land, but you see a, a really cool archaeological dig. You can see these two arches, stone arches. The key feature that allows an, a rounded arch to support itself is the stone in the middle of the arch. It's called the keystone. Without that keystone and its particular shape and the way it, the, the stones transfer the pressure onto that keystone, it's really, really important. Without that keystone, the arch cannot hold itself up. And so we tend to use keystone to refer to something that is really critical or an important factor in anything that we're talking about. White-tailed deer are considered a keystone species within forested lands. It's keystone because it is critically important to the health and success of any ecosystem that is dependent on the forested environment. There are landscape level effects and the landscape I'm just referring to a wide or a large scale impact. They affect the productivity, and the successional development of forested lands. Succession is the change in plant communities over time and a natural regeneration of a forest stand involves succession. Deer are browsers of woody vegetation, woody plants, and so they eat significant amounts of upright trees and shrubs and so they affect that successional process. And in the process of that, they also affect the productivity on an annual basis from these habitats. So they have significant impacts on the vegetative communities within which they live. They impact their own habitat quality and also the habitat quality of other species, especially shrub nesting birds and amphibians. If you remember the earlier photo of that uh, forested habitat with no regeneration, no shrub layer underneath the, the upper canopy. Well, if you're a shrub nesting bird, you're not going to be successful in that habitat. And if you're an amphibian, you're going to do better if there's a multi-layered canopy from the upper canopy, the mid-story, and, and a lower shrub canopy. 